today we're looking at LED lighting drivers. This is something I wanted to speak about on what was the design consideration going into that project using the LED. Why have I chosen a simple FET type of configuration over a linear driver, a switching drive? You know, these are different things that one needs to consider when trying to build a circuit like this. What is the best potential outcome for you? What are the pros and cons of it? So when we come to considering how to drive LEDs, the foremost concern rules around acceptable power law. In battery powered devices, this translates directly into reduced battery life while high power LED applications, you know, this this results in really excessive heat generation. As you might see some boards, they will use an al aluminium backing. Instead, this is to help with the heat. And before you make even a choice on one of these methods, be it linear or switching or just using some FED, it's crucial to have a clear idea of how much power your design can effectively dissipate. So, and this usually considers the main bulk of your decision. Another thing to consider is the total number of LEDs that you're trying to drive. And it's not just the total count, but also the diversity in colors and what type they are. And I say this because as you might have known, even with your simple like through hole LEDs, like they all have different voltage ratings and current, maybe some different standard current rating, you know, so these things are you need to take into consideration. So the greater the variety of these things, the more complex the task becomes and matching forward voltages between different LED stands becomes a bit more of a challenge. As well, to add to that, the LED count plays a pivotal role in determining the required driving voltage for running them in series. This brings us to linear drive circuit. What this is, is it is characterized by dissipating excess power per in the form of heat. It's usually the simplest to configure and carry the cheapest slash easiest option. Here we are in the project itself and you can see I've opted for this kind of configuration of a linear drive circuit. This is is the well by far the most easiest way to do it it is a simple led resistor circuit driven by fed you can have this plugged into the gpio of a of a microcontroller and now achieve the task though the significant drawback of this is that it's dissipation of excess power and also ensuring the adequate voltage headroom to drive these leds are essential you also need to make sure and i'm just adding things that if you're deciding to drive from a microcontroller you'll find that it has a maximum current output somewhere in the data sheet of your chosen microcontroller and this is where you know you'll only have certain amount that you can drive out for so those leds with higher power requirements they may not work so well driving with a mosfet hour which i've opted for here i have several of these just controlling and this this is so i can control it how i switch it off i can probably do some pw and to control the brightness i believe i could try and fiddle around fiddle around with that and see so this is quite this is quite simple you know this is how you drive a higher power application as we're just taking straight off the five volt rail and just powering each of our individual leds from here and notice i don't have many of these in series if you wanted them to put in series you could so you could put i could put multiple of these in series actually and it would probably achieve the same effect i wanted it separately perhaps to maybe just have one light on three lights on it's more functionality and control though i'm sure there are some ic's that could give you that control also but this is what you need to consider and that the amount of heat this thing would produce uh how much you need to dissipate and it's why i mentioned think i did some calculations and i, did, I picked 0805 from the calculations i did around here I went to 1206 because these could provide me with a one watt clearance so there's more than enough power available in these resistors to dissipate that heat again this is just using your simple ohm's law and power equations p equals ir or v equals I, rp equals i square something you can do is that if the power is getting too much to handle in a linear led circuit so for example if these resistors would were too much to handle uh, for one packet what we could do is place two instead so i could place another one over here and this i could separate these to 12 12 13 whatever and this would uh, separate and dissipate the heat more even so this this so you can actually practically employ a smaller size resistor if you're concerned for space and because it's small size you, you have a lower power rating but essentially it'd be the same if you play the nc you're placing these resistors because they are well what was going to be generated heat and try to emit that you could we could place them strategically around the board to dissipate heat even more if we don't need to keep them all in one big hot spot for example so one thing you might be asking so why don't we just use this for everything why can't we just do this and the thing is a resistor circuit can now provide a constant current source which is where LED drivers come into play. Many integrated LED drivers supply consistent current to an LED strand, offering significant convenience compared to a resistor-driven circuit. However, it's important to understand that these drivers still utilize linear technology, so you need to be really careful with the heat it's going to produce and make sure you dissipate that effectively. Take a look at this data sheet over here with a K KTDA2 2026. It is a simple constant current RGB slash white uh, linear driver I've chosen. And you can see you can get these in different settings. So you could, we could have used this one actually. And I'll pick on the reasons why considerations as well. We could have used this device actually to, to drive our LEDs. 
that would have been totally fine and you know we have we could use this control versus i squared c so we could see with an unchecked controller led blink rate fade in and out user adjustable result color light so this thing would have been totally fine for our requirements also it probably would have been cheaper than several fet it is what it is i might just put this in actually and you know have a difference to have a play around with it and be no issue but it's again it's giving yourself more work how comfortable you are with coding so with gpr i could just flick it on and off i was a bit more firmware involved not a lot you get what i mean so i just noticed here 24 milliamps max maybe i didn't want to maybe it was 30 milliamp uh, i wanted to drive it at so this wouldn't have been you see this is where you have to think and what comes through the alternative to that is a switching drive so similar to like we have linear regulators, we have switching regulators, we also have a switching driver. And the switch mode calls and current LED driver operate similar to a linear driver, may it, it will achieve the same thing, except we employ the switching technology. And of course, as you know, switching technology, there's boost converters, buck converters, they all are all much more efficient than your linear things. Up to 80-90%, pay a bit more, probably get 95 so one notable thing is that it is a higher cost and they un introduce unwanted switch mode noise into the system. So if you are designing this for some application or EMC and you had multiple different switching drivers, it may not be the best thing. It's you're probably the cost would go up even significant because you have more filtering to do and sure everything passes and whatnot. So this is something you need to think about and do I really want to have this to trade off for this or is, is heat more of a bigger concern? This is why I would do well, this is why i want to employ this so again we have this data sheet another one from diodes incorporated and we have a a switch mode sw step down converter it said i'm not quite sure what it's stepping down to the voltage we'll see and we can see we have our inductor kind of similar to a switch mode circuit that you'll see uh, it says we can adjust we have a pwm waveform so we could actually do that part the dimming and the adjustable uh we can adjust pin we can have different options to what we want to do with it so this is some configuration that you might see if it fits your needs and what you want to do so it's not only this there are also buck boost drivers that could drive from a certain voltage to a 20 up volt so it could save you the hassle of Empl employing another regulator of some sort while well, you can have this all in one device so instead of having two power sources maybe two switching converter supplies you could just have this one for just for purely for your led let me see the device operation from itself so it's really just a trade-off into what you want to consider is that do you really value that efficiency and that heat being dissipated effectively and you may not you know maybe you're not worried about the noise whatever maybe it's just one-off thing or home device and you have the action go ahead or perhaps you're more concerned about you may be a linear device and you can get away with that or there's not much heat um, effectively needed to be dissipated so it really does depend on what you want so when we consider all these factors that go in so why did i choose this over why did i choose this over linear or switching converter and and what did i say to determine the best for this project often it's budget that plays a pivotal role in this but as we said before i could have gotten away with two of those linear drive ic's to achieve the same thing but again, it's the time something it would take him. So for this, implementing a simple switching, let's take for example, maybe a swing from the pendulum. Maybe you just want to make a simple LED indicator of some sort. You don't need a switching converter for such a thing. If you just have one LED, you don't need a switching converter for that. You could just drive it off the GPI open. That would be unjustified. You don't need it. Or you could just use the FET as in this configuration. As I said before, the linear driver, I didn't want to mess around with the I squared C protocols. This, I could achieve whatever I wanted to do. So I could drive it. I could have individually turn off and I'll have whatever color I want. Uh, I could set the brightness and whatever, controlling what I wanted to pass through. I can, it's probably a little more expensive, as I said before, with the linear solution or switching solution solution just because i have so many fets but what well, these are like 20p each eight uh one, 160 was it 270 if i can math maybe it's like three pound it's not going to kill me and get these all right and it'll work fine and the time it takes to integrate and like set all these up compared to i squared again it takes more time than what i want to deal with so that's that's all i wanted to say i hope hope this was explained thoroughly into the diff into the different application of the led driver circuit and again it always comes down to money so the main three things that before I end off is ultimately consider things like heat, dissipation, efficiency, and the cost. And those three should really give you a good indicator of what topology you want to go with and what you should employ in your circuit.